What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm working on a 2011 Mercury Mariner. This vehicle has 110,000 miles on it, almost on the clock, and it's the second time that's needed padded and rotors. The person that drives this vehicle does do a lot of deliveries, therefore they're on the brakes a lot. So we're upgrading it to drilled and slotted rotors, and we're gonna go through the steps you need to do to change your rotors on your Mercury Mariner and give you some pretty good visuals so that you can do this successfully. The first step that you're gonna do in removing these parts on here is pretty simple. There's a retainer clip right down here. That's gonna be the first thing we remove with a flat head, and that will release it so we can start to pry away the pads. So once you've got that retainer clip off, you're gonna to wanna to take a pry bar or flathead or whatever you have, and you're gonna to wanna to come into these little jam areas and start to push back uh, the pads, make sure they're still working, get ready to get it loose. And then step three is you're actually going to jump over to the back side. So here on the top side, you're simply going to remove one of these little plastic retainer clips. Um, and you're gonna put a Allen key in there, I believe and start to loosen it. It will also be over here, if I can get a good angle on it, um, on the bottom side. <laughs> or it's missing. <laughs> so once you've got the caps off, you're gonna put an Allen key in here. This one's a seven millimeter. It was a little tough to get this off, so I used a little bit of force and I put this part over top. So once you have those pieces unscrewed, um, it's pretty easy to take these pads off. These things aren't the worst I've ever seen, but there's a lot of pulsing and a lot of vibration. So it's just time to replace it and upgrade. So once you get it to this point, um, this is where some of the leverage is gonna come into play. You're gonna need an 18 millimeter socket to fit on the back of here. And then you're definitely gonna need one of these guys to get some leverage to get them off. So the hardest part is next. It's getting this piece off. We know I'm replacing the we're replacing the rotors and the pads. So it's time to take a hammer to this bad boy and get. So on the removal of this brake rotor, what happened with me is I started hammering away at it and it wasn't going anywhere. And that happens because of oxygen, because of water, because of rust, because of not using anti-seizing lubricants. What I had to do is actually get one of these hydraulic presses to put on the brake rotor so I can crank it off. Okay, so now that this is off, there is just a ton of corrosion and buildup. So you're gonna definitely wanna hit this stuff with some brake clean and start to scrub so that it doesn't get stuck on there again. So there's the old rotors and here's the bad boys, the new ones. So here's the fun part, the journey home. Right now, I'm using a tool that's essentially a press. You could use a C-clamp on here, but what we're doing is we're turning it in so we can get this guy in place and make the journey home. So on the return process, we're gonna put this unit back on and you're gonna start to put the bolts in place um, that you were keeping to the side. You wanna make sure that all this fits so this one slides in like cake work. This piece is pressed in, time to make some magic. Okay, so there we have it. Brake rotors on, brake calipers on, brake pads are on, all good to go. Now it's time to put the tire on and put it all back together and make sure it's running smooth. 